Howdy, my friend. Get it? Howdy, there's cowboys on my shirt. <laughs> I'm sorry, my name's Kaylin, but let's get to the point. Welcome to another session of Freestyles, where I show you how to make super bomb food without any fuss, without any recipes, and however you please. I mean, what could be greater? I think that anybody should be able to just hop in the kitchen, throw themselves together a meal, and be done with it. No matter how picky of an eater you are, or if you have any dietary restrictions. I mean, everybody should be able to eat easily. So without further ado, I'm gonna be showing you how to make something that I'm sure you never even imagined you could make at home. Today, we're gonna be making some yellow curry. Oh, it's so good. I could picture it now. So let's get started. Yo, 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 it's your girl Kaylin, and I would like to welcome you back to another session of Freestyles, where today we're going to be making a simple yellow curry, but you can pretty much throw in whatever you got in the fridge. So we're gonna start out with just a little bit of coconut oil. Use whatever oil you want, really. Next, you're gonna be adding in whatever veggies you want. In my case, I'm gonna be starting with some cabbage. Really, you just wanna start with whatever is going to take the most amount of time to cook, and then you'll slowly keep adding in as you go along. Now, a yellow curry can rock many a veggie, but some of my favorites would include snap peas, tomatoes, squash, bean sprouts, carrots, little mini ears of corn. Now, ginger. Ginger adds so much to a curry and pretty much any sort of Asian style dish in my opinion. If you're not a fan of ginger, try to cook it a little bit longer and you're gonna bring out a lot more of those sweet flavors rather than those spicy flavors. But of course, you can put it in a little bit later if you wanna maintain some of that spice. It's super versatile in that way. But hey, if you don't like it, forget about it. See if I care. But if you haven't tried it, at least give it a shot because it's really good for you. And on another note, what do you do with the little bit of nub that you get left over with ginger? Because you can't grate that without risking your poor thumb's life, but you'd hate to see it go to waste. Let me know in the comments below. All right, so you're just gonna stir that ginger right on in. I like to add my ginger right before some of the quicker cooking vegetables, so around the four to three minute mark. While your veggies are getting their cook on, it's time to incorporate some herby business. Now, really, whatever herbs you like that you think would complement the flavor, go for it. So, I'm a big fan of cilantro on my curry, but basil is a pretty good second in my flavor palette, but hey, get out there with it. So whatever herb it is, just go ahead and chop that up while everything cooks. Slowly, over time, you can begin adding all your other vegetables depending on what's going to take the least amount of time to cook. You're going to want to add that in last, remember. In my case, just some scallions because that's what I had. And of course, garlic is always a great flavor option. It's full of antioxidants, really good for you, but not everybody can have it, not everybody likes it. So leave it out if you don't want it. Substitute garlic oil, whatever needs to happen. Once everything is pretty much done cooking, you're gonna add in your curry powder. And you're just gonna measure with your heart here. Add as much as your little heart desires. In my case, way too much. Now you wanna let this cook in with the vegetables for a minute and that's gonna really help the flavors to meld and to activate all the flavors that are in the curry powder, even though it seems a little counterintuitive because you know the broth of the curry is what's supposed to be yellow. And here is yet another moment to freestyle. Add whatever flavors you're looking to add. I add turmeric because its muscle ache healing abilities is unrivaled and I love it. But feel free to add in any spice like cayenne or paprika if that's what you like. This is all about you and what you like. I mean, you're gonna be the one eating it, right? Not me. Now, this is where you add in the milk portion. Now, this can be pretty versatile. I prefer coconut milk. It just seems a little bit more traditional, but feel free to use any other type of milk. I mean, you got what you got, but coconut milk is my favorite here. Now, if you're either low or cheap on coconut milk, I like to add in a little bit of broth. Now, you can do veggie broth to keep it vegan. I'm using bone broth because I occasionally like to get down with that, and it's full of protein, but it's totally up to you. On the other hand, you can just straight up add water or maybe even just more coconut milk. That really depends on what you're going for here. If you want a more creamy curry, then definitely go for more coconut milk. Now we're gonna put the heat up on this and get it to simmer, and this is the point where you can start thinking about protein. 
when a broth is simmering or curry or any even pasta sauce, this is the opportunity to get lazy with it. You can add shrimp raw and it'll cook within a few minutes. Same goes for chicken with just a little bit more time. In this case, I'm gonna go with some chickpeas to keep it a little bit more plant-based for today. But if you do decide to go with meat and cook it in there, then just be sure to wait until the shrimp is nice and pink and firm, or when the chicken is nice and firm, tender, and evenly colored. Okay, so that aggressive boil was not quite it. I just tend to get distracted, but you kind of just want to go for a light simmer. If it gets a little bit aggressive like that, just turn the heat down a little bit, simmering nice like this, what you see here. At this point, this is where you can add in some sort of leafy business. You could do kale, spinach, but in my case, I found some Swiss chard in my fridge, so that's what I'm going for. I bet some garden bok choy would really just be mwah, magnificent, but we didn't have any of that, so that's fine. If you don't have any leafy greens at all, that's fine. Now, this is the final countdown, the last minute. This is where you're gonna start thinking about flavor. And I know salt definitely is good at bringing out flavor, so we'll start with that. But also, something I rarely don't put in my cooking is coconut aminos. It's basically a soy sauce substitute that doesn't have any soy in it. But feel free to do tamari if you're gluten-free, normal soy sauce if you don't care and it's not a problem. We're gonna really get all the flavor pump in here with a little bit of acidity. Now, I'd prefer a lime, but I have a lemon. So that's what I went with. There's not a huge difference, but I just think a lime would be a little bit more complimentary. If you don't have any bit of citrus, no worries. Leave it out. Lastly, I like to add black pepper just to help activate some of the health benefits of the turmeric, but you can leave this out if you don't want it or if you didn't even add turmeric to begin with. All this simmering business pretty much took place over about two to three minutes of just, you know, adding in your leafy greens and all of your flavor components. You pretty much just want to give a couple minutes for the flavors to all melt. And there you have it, a super bomb yellow curry for your enjoyment. And if you're not filming for YouTube, then you can take your curry off of the heated plate while you get your grains. I was boring, I went with brown rice, but feel free to do quinoa, ramen noodles, eat it by itself, do whatever you want. I really hope you enjoyed freestyling your very own curry. Feel free to share what you ended up doing with yours on Instagram with me at Grow and Grub and uh, subscribe and like for more. I'll see you later.